the reaction that I got to that question is actually more telling of who we are than the question. Because not only personally was I understanding what was being said, the reaction to that was so out of whack with who we might think we are. Not just from Taranaki, but from around New Zealand. The, 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 there was support as well. You know, it's unfair to say there wasn't. There was, but the vitriol and the depth of it was really, really sad. Um, for me personally, and I, and I share this, I recognised myself in this though. So personally, I was going through this sort of realisation that I've always harboured those thoughts and feelings too. You know, a few years ago, or after, no, a year ago before my getting the job, I, I would have stood with those people. I would have said that. So I used to ask myself, why, why, why did I, why am I like that? Why did I have all those driving back from the white that with the leaseholders think enough is enough? Did I actually know what was done, how it was done, the net effect of what's done? Why don't we talk about the treaty? Why don't we talk about our land wars? Why don't we talk about it, this colonial attitude that I have harboured? Why am I so angry? Because if what I'm saying is the truth, the truth wouldn't bring up anger. You know, if you disagree with somebody and you, they're completely wrong, generally, unless you're in the mood, you'd just smile and move on. But this harboured something different, something really deep, a real angst and fear, and you'd see people's eyes glaze over. But I knew, I, I connected with that, I understood where they were coming from. So I asked myself why, and I had to, I had to keep challenging myself why. And it's ongoing because it's so, I'm 51 years old and it was planted, I've had it all my life. That's why I say I'm a recovering racist, because I am, I, the only conclusion I could come to is, it's racism. Yet, as an emotion, we never ever talk about that in New Zealand either, I would argue, because, you know, humans, we understand uh, um, greed, anger, laughter, love, you know, disappointment. Do we ever talk about racism in the sense of Pākehā to Pākehā? About, you know, are we actually racist? Have we considered what that, how that presents, how it feels? Because what I was experiencing is, now that I'd met Māori and was walking in a Māori world, I was actually putting real people to those feelings that I had. Whereas prior to that I didn't. I, didn't, I never walked in a Māori world any way, shape or form. No requirement on me to do that. Imagine though, and it's a reality, an elected mayor of a district like Taranaki who'd never been on a marae. No requirement to engage, no requirement to understand anything Māori. Yet I would have championed and, and argued on a, any platform that our multiculturalism is fine and we, we're a leader on the world. And I, I defend that. And don't you dare call me racist. How dare you? And one of the things that I would do is I'd deflect. I'd say, well, at least I'm not like Australia, or at least I'm not like you know the, the horrific stuff in America. Totally ignoring my own lack of knowledge, my own lack of understanding or empathy, and my sheer blindness to my entitlement of being in a majority. So why am I championing, and why do I continue to push for Māori Ward? Why did I go to the UN? Well, simply this. Why is it New Zealand that only the decision for a Māori ward can go to a binding petition and a poll that takes it away. And everyone would say to me, and up to last month, the Minister of Local Government said to me, it's appropriate that it goes that way, Andrew, because it's race-based. So of course, with all due respect, if it's race-based, why is it there then? Because you, the Crown, put it there as an option for councils to use. Why is it there if it's race-based? Because if your argument's race-based when a council resolves to establish it, You've created something that you've just called race-based. You're actually then admitting that your policies are race-based. You can't have it both ways, because actually it's treaty-based, it's partnership, and it's representation-based. So we're, we're not serious, I would argue, about proper true engagement with our partner in Māoridom. And it comes from all those things I say. Lack of teaching. Why don't we teach the treaty? You know, if you're in America, I'm sure you would learn about the founding documents. We hear it all the time, don't we? Yet they do. Why don't we? Why don't we regard that as our principal document as a country? What's wrong? Why don't we learn? Why don't we learn about what happened in New Zealand? It's odd. Why, though, do we use Māori culture when it suits? And the example I used, 18 months ago, went to China with some optician colleagues. 
The very last night we're asked to do a skit from our native country, come in your national costume. We sat next to the Australians, teasing them. Ah, oh, you culturalist, baronless Australians. What are you going to do? You've got your hat with your corks going on, have you? And they're saying to us, oh, you, 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 you don't realise how lucky you are having Māori culture. That's right, we say. Black t-shirts, silver fern, get up to go and do the haka. Not many of us knew how to do the haka. I'd never done it in my life. Knew enough from watching the All Blacks. Kind of knew the, the tune more than the words. And we did what we did. Got off, claps, and everything's great. Flying home, I thought to myself, gosh, Andrew, how arrogant are you? Because I'm not British, right? Clearly, I can't go back to England if I wanted to. And I'm not Māori. I've got no ounce of Māori in me at all. Yet I thought it appropriate to grab something as mine without any knowledge of what it meant, how it was, how it connected. But actually the next question was, so then what is my culture? An all black jersey isn't a culture. Red, 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 you know, red band gum boots onto the farm isn't a culture. What is my culture? Maybe that's partly why I used to get so scared. Am I lost as, a, as where I fit? Why don't I go and look at Māori? Why, why have I been why am I a person who can grab it when I want it and put it back in its box when I don't? What does that say about who I am? And we do this internationally, don't we? We'll put out the karakia and all the things to look good. And the minute people turns their backs, can I have a seat around the table to be part of the conversation? I don't think so. That's race-based, mate. You stand like everyone else. We've got it wrong. We need a new conversation, a new beginning. Because we'll never truly heal and fix our ailments and challenges that we have if we don't acknowledge what's happened in our past. You know, I need to acknowledge what my ancestors did when they arrived here. Why do I need to do that? Because I harbour an attitude and a, 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 a way of treating Māoridom with no knowledge. Yet I've come to realise, of course, Māori see this and feel this. What are we like? We're so arrogant. We don't see the harm we do to Māori. And a, and a reflection is, why aren't you standing for the mayoralty again? If you truly believed in what you said, you're given up, you're a wuss. No, I'm standing exactly where I said I would stand. I'm not moving from that at all. I'm simply not seeking election. Because the questions now is, we need to ask the same questions I asked of myself. People need to ask themselves. Because we, we're not, is that the New Zealand we want to be? We're in such denial of what happened. We can't even talk about a treaty to our children. That has an effect. We always point and blame Māori for all the bad statistics. Have we, ever, Pākehā, ever, ever looked at ourselves? Have we ever asked, do we have a part in this, maybe? Am I kind of, do I harbour an attitude? I now say, of course we do. And I can say that now from experience. Why? Because throughout this whole journey, I've seen myself in my own culture shooting it down by shooting me down and I'm not Māori. We're broken. We need to fix. But we need to find a way to fix in peace, in respect, in tolerance and for heaven's sake caring for each other. What's happened to us? Arguing won't fix this. That's why there's no point standing. It'll just be for people to prove a point. That'll just polarise us more. It won't certainly get into the hearts and minds of people to ask those questions of themselves. Because that's, that's where the hard part is, to truly be honest with yourself. Because it doesn't matter what you think of me, it's irrelevant. It's what do you think of yourself? Have you given yourself the truth and honesty to actually research properly? Have you gone onto a marae and looked into the eyes of the Māori people to see how that has an effect on them? Imagine being a young, impressionable Māori having to watch a campaign with Andrew Judd and hear they're hopeless, they're useless, they should stand like the rest of us. Have you ever stopped to consider how hurtful and damaging that would be? And then wonder why we've got statistics that are broken without having looked at ourselves. We are, in so many ways, the problem. We've got to change. So the Peace Walk is about that. It's about let's get together. Because I'm not alone in this. I've had great support in this space. Let's stand and say, look, we want to make a change. I don't want, to, I don't want future mayors to not be in the space I was in, where you didn't know anything, 
our elected representatives, whether it be politicians, school leaders, church leaders, uh, employers, each other, in the same space because I had certain seeds planted in me as a child. We need to plant new seeds, one that is tolerant, respectful and understands our differences because actually it's the differences that make us strong, not trying to merge in, into one, 